had a, a pretty standard record contract, which is like a 20%. Even if it was $10 a record, times 180,000 records, that's mm -hmm. 1.8 million. 20% of that, you could do the math, it's Thanks. like 300,000, mm -hmm. right? And they had already given me an advance. I made no money on those right. three records. And it was great because obviously I have publishing, I have wrote and produced everything, mm -hmm. so our money's happening. Most people don't have that. Yeah, but in terms of record royalties, mm -hmm. that's a couple hundred thousand, right? right? So when I actually sold my record directly, no middlemen, I sold my tickets directly, no middlemen, 15,000 records times $10, that's 150,000, mm -hmm. I went straight to my pocket. Right. And then the beauty of actually knowing every single person who bought my record means mm -hmm. that when I went on tour, you know I could send a text go. to them. Nobody goes to concerts alone. Mm -hmm. And also concert tickets cost four times as much as the album. My concert ticket for my show is $40. $40 times 40,000 tickets that we sold in Europe behind that album is less is more album that I did, 40,000 tickets. That's $1.6 million. million. I mean, the math is totally crazy. Yeah. And I don't need to go platinum. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Jules 88, bringing the good, bad, and the oh so ugly. And welcome to the first episode of 88 Radio. You know, um, I, this uh, podcast became, became a topic because uh, I was on my friend Nicole Marie's podcast, uh, For the Record podcast. Um, she just started up. We were just, I've been on there two times. And we would just be just talking, and we just one of the topic is was we talk like we maybe basically we were talking about independent artist stuff. So and that inspired me to bring back this show. Uh, it was originally Coffee with John, but I put that in the past because I started doing that during the, um, you know the whole pandemic and whatnot. Um, so I decided to bring it back because I was doing this 88 radio thing on Instagram, like where I just post a, um, a GIF and add music to it, like just different things. And it was getting a lot of traction. I said, let me turn turn this into something. So I'm gonna have other I'm gonna have other artists come in on the show, whether it's via Zoom or in person or whatever the case may be. But um you know the topic me and her talked about, Nicole talked about, um uh John T. Austin, he was talking about selling all his music independently and how much money he made. He made over a million dollars just independently. Just no middleman. He's like he pretty, pretty much broke it down like he pretty much broke it down like um he did it he, he like he'll do a say he do a show in London and he'll book the show and then he'll send out a mass text a, a mass email I'm gonna be in your city and people is that tickets cost more than albums and people don't buy tickets alone we don't go to shows alone and he makes yada 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 of X amount of dollars. And that's solely independently. And as an independent artist myself, and I know a lot of independent artists, thinking like this mindset is is such a dope thing. Because I think a lot of independent artists need to first I need to see the video. Um if I can, I'm gonna try to post it at either at the end of this video or at the beginning of the video. I'm Y'all gonna see the video. Um, it's like a 30 second clip. So, I'm thinking to myself, like, I remember 2008, 2009, around that time. That rhyme. Um, a buddy of mine, he was um, doing, he was being, he was trying to be a manager and whatnot. And he was working with an artist, like, bro, he was trying to get his man booked. I'm like, bro. I said, how about this? How about you book your own show? He's like, what you talking about? Like, have somebody open up for you, sell tickets, and have people come out. And, you know, that was before I knew what I knew now. You know what I mean? I wasn't researching it like that. Like, I wasn't thinking like, I, 
I would say I was ahead of my time back then. I was like ahead of the game, not even. I, what I did have the resources that I have now. I did not have those resources to um, to um, you know. I did have those kind of research sources. I didn't. I didn't know. What I didn't know back in 2008, 2009. You know what I mean? So. And they were like, nah, man, that's too difficult. You know, I don't know if that's going to really work. I don't want to put money into something that may not, you know, give my money back, you know, yada, yada, yada. And it bothered me. It bothered me even more now to think, like, bro, you could have, I mean, if I knew then what I knew now, I would have had a lock on the game. I would have been way ahead of myself. But, you know. Guy at the top of everything, and think about it as an independent from an independent artist standpoint like doing your own shows and building your core. That's where building your core fan base comes into play. Like going out, doing that's why I always say do these open mics. If you gotta do an open mic from the start of 2023 to the end of 2023, just not even to the end, like from the start to like damn near August. Just run those open mics. Just run, do, uh, do every open mic you can to build a fan base. Build it. Bump your music. Connect with other artists. Build a connection with other artists. So when the time comes, like yo, I'm gonna put some money in your pocket. I got this idea for a show. I need you with me. And this is how much it's gonna. This is uh, do your numbers. Look at it. This yada yada yada. And do the show. It, and then you got money in your pocket. You know, sell the tickets it's independently. You can make so much money independently. That's why I tell. I told a buddy of mine. You do not. My buddy of mine. He was so hell bent on being signed to a label. I'm like, bro, why are you trying to get signed to a label when you can do it independently? I speak about it all the time. Like I know it's harder to do it independently, and it costs more money to do it independently. But I mean, the risk is worth it. the risk is worth the reward in the end. You know what I mean? Because I took so many gambles on myself, and my friends we took gambles on ourselves. Like yo, we gonna put in on, we gonna split this venue. And we're going to make our money back. And we have. We made more than what we made back before. We made more back on one venue before. Like, we made back. The venue was this. And we made that, which was amazing. Yo, it was It was like, dang, we made our money back. You know what I mean? As like, even if you make your money back and it's not even that much. But then, the, the, the beautiful part, if you're selling merch, if you're selling merch, you're still gonna get it back, especially if you uh, if people really support you. Like these hoodies, I don't have these on stock. I don't have these on stock. I got these on my site, link in the description. But these are the Breast Cancer Awareness June '88 hoodie. You know, real good quality. But um, I got T-shirts. So if I go to a show and we selling tickets for this much, and we barely get over that hump, and all of us selling merch, hey, bro, we made. Our money back, and we got money off of merch. We pretty much made our money back. You know what I mean? I look at it at a, I look at it from a different, a different perspective nowadays. You know, you know. I look at it like as a, I look at it. I really look at it as a business. Let me get some of this water real quick. Right. But I look at it like a lot of people. They don't want to do the independent round because it costs too much money. They rather get this crazy loan from a from a big time record label, and if you don't make that money back in and whatever in, in, like, in the first week, you gotta pay. You know what I mean? Like they ain't getting you out your freaking contract. I remember I interviewed Russ. Um, I, I like Russ. I'm a fan of Russ. He says a lot of intelligent things. Like, yo, I, I went to, now, I can't do this. I wouldn't do this, but I can't afford to do it. He said he went to the bank and put out a loan, pulled out a, a line of credit for $500,000 and funded his project, Chomp. I think it was Chomp. 
three or Chomp two, one of those. I think it's, I think it was Chomp three or Chomp two is one of them. He said he put a line of credit, put a billboard in Times Square for like I think he, said he did it for like a like a, a day or two, two three days or a week, and he said. I can, he said on the breakfast club, I can pay that blown back right now. But why? I'm like, jeesh. The fact you put out that much money, I can pay that back right now. And just say it was so much easier. I can pay that back now. But why? I can do this with it. I can do that with it. I can yada, yada, yada with it. And that's, and that's, that, that's, the, that's the extreme independent. That's like, you know that you're going to get everything you want back with your money. You ain't, you're ain't. you not going to be in debt to nobody because you got it. You know what I mean? And I would love to have that kind of uh, resource to I could go to the bank and pull that much money out and fund projects and fund different ventures that I want to fund for myself or somebody else. Like, yo, I can help with this, with that project you need. I can help you out, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Because I'm all about paying it forward and helping out the people that I didn't have helping me when I was coming up. You know what I mean? I didn't have anybody helping me. Like I always say, you can go back. I got videos going way back talking about that and then like, Saying I didn't have Big Brother helping me answer, I, didn't, I had questions, but I didn't have nobody answering. But I say this the independent way is just it's it's fun, it's fun. It's all, but then again, I, uh, Nicole said when I was on her show, um, I, I linked that in the description too. You got to budget everything. Everything is about a budget. That's the thing about being independent. You got to budget out everything. And I said, the, as an art, independent artist. The most you're gonna pay, in my opinion, I don't even think it's an opinion, I think it's pretty much damn near facts at this point. The most you're gonna pay as an independent artist is on a video shoot. In a photo shoot. The, the video shoot is gonna be the most. Unless you have your own camera and you shoot and direct your own videos You're good. You ain't spending no money. And, and then on top of that, you I mean, beats too. You know, I got beats stockpiled. I got beats that I bought. I never used. I still got beats. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. I still have beats that I've not used. I was on my phone yesterday. I'm like, yo, I still ain't use this beat. You know, I put all my beats on my phone. I haven't used this beat. I haven't used it. Like, I have beats I have not used. Like, I, I haven't even touched. You know what I mean? I've been like, yo. I, I, at the time, I'm like, I want to use this for something. But I, I just like, you know what? I I don't know what I'm going to use it for. But beats, you can probably get for cheap. That rhymed again. Well, you can probably get some beats for a pretty good price. Because a lot of producers, you know, you find, a, like, you, you know, on YouTube, you find different producers, you go to their BeatStar website and they have a buy two, get one free, buy three, get one free, buy two, get two free, like, they got deals, so if you're doing a, if you're literally going to do like a, a four track EP, you didn't got your beats right there, you are good in these streets, you got all your beats, boom, you got everything you need. And then, the most part, another thing, if you don't have your own home studio, I'm blessed to have my own thing from the grace of the God. I got my own home studio. I record myself. I record all my recording myself. The only thing I pay for is, like, for the mixing and mastering. And that's fairly cheap. Fairly cheap. If, if you ask me, it's fairly cheap. It's not too expensive, but it's not too cheap either. But it's it's a reasonable price, you know what I mean, and that's always a good thing. You you gotta find, you gotta budget. Like I say, as an indie artist, I think the most you'll spend that you make your budget may be is I would say I would say a ballpark number, and I'm gonna get up out of here is no more than a thousand. And that's a lot. Just that's just a ballpark. I would say 
I don't even know. I think about eight hundred dollars, just eight, cause half of that is gonna go on buying beats and a photo shoot. No, okay, I'll go back to it. A, 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 I'll get a thousand, cause that's if no, okay. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna say eight. I'm gonna say eight only because if you got your own home studio, if you got your own home studio, you can record whenever you want. And if you got your own camera, you can take your own folk pictures and do your own video shoots. You're good. And yeah, that's, that's about this video. It's 14 minutes long. I'm about to get up out of here. I'm gonna, I just want to give y'all something quick. Um, yeah, y'all, I just hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Um, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Um, it's, like I said, this is uh, it's Monday, so like I said, I'm going to definitely put that video. If I find it, I'm going to put it at the beginning of this video. So if you made it this far, thumbs up the video. And if you made it this far to the video, like the video and put in the comments, I love coffee. All right. Peace. See you next week. That rhymed again. I'm on a roll. I'm out.